there's a lot of talk about open education um, and what that means and what are what is openness in the world of higher education and just education in general. Some people will say open is just free. As long as it's free, it's open. I think that's a wrong tack to take because open doesn't necessarily mean free. To my mind, open is really about the the relationship that exists between the vendor and the instructor and the learner in terms of education. Is the material that is being constructed available for reuse and remixing across a whole spectrum of systems? And are we creating really an open system or a closed system of knowledge when we're assembling materials? A lot of people have said that the learning management system or the virtual learning environment or the course management system, whatever you want to call it, is dead. And that it's technology that was just existed at sort of a brief period of time at the end of you know, the 1990s and into the 2000s and now we're in this new Web, web 2.0 era and there's no reason to have an LMS anymore. I really reject this notion. I think, first of all, if you look at what students want to do and what they tell us about how they want to get access to materials in the course, they see the course management system with its simple aggregation of course materials and tools into one common place as very useful. It was an editorial a year or so ago in the GW Hatchet where a student said that they um, really just wished every instructor would just put their materials online and that every course would be improved just by this one simple step. I also think it shortchanges the institution when you say the LMS is dead. Because when you think about it, an institution is the par a key part of the experience that a student has when they, when they go to campus. Um, people are looking for that kind of a virtual space that conveys the, the symbolism of the, the university and, and creates a kind of uh, space to, to, to talk and collaborate with other students. And I think if you go completely away and reject the notion of an LMS, you, you kind of lose. The other thing I think that it forgets is that a course isn't just a Google document. It isn't just a textbook. A course is, a, is an overall narrative constructed by an instructor and delivered to the students. This is why I think that just pure computer-based training models don't work on their own. You need to have that instructor who's involved with students on a daily basis, who's driving, guiding students through that story. And so when you think about how you know, an activity they do relates to an outcome like a grade, or how the a, a quiz that they take relates to a set of, of materials that they went through, as well as a set of lectures that they attended, a set of discussions that happened with their peers, and being able to pull all that information together and organize those stories is really critical. Now let's think about how we collect those items together. The learning management system has done an excellent job of making it very easy to pull all those different resources and tools and experiences together into one single place. Um, and once you do that, the next phase is really, how do we then take those experiences and package them up in a way that we can share those concepts with other instructors? This is this idea of taking these narrative narratives together and putting them into a set, a, a, a database, if you will, or a set of knowledge, um, a guided path, that's something that is actually easily done with a format called Common Cartridge. Because all Common Cartridge does is provide an open way to package up all these different resources and put them into a set, into an organized uh, collection. Now, once you have that collection of resources, the next step becomes how do you how do you interact with those collection with that collection of resources? Um, you know, um, so when we think about how learning management systems have evolved in higher education, what we really have is this idea of a um, much more engaged hybrid model where the, the instructor is present, where you're you're reading the materials or you're watching a podcast, but then you know you're participating in something like an online collaboration session or interacting with them, even potentially in a real classroom setting where they, they then 
have this interactivity happening as part of the carrying the student through the, the process of, of learning. Um, and the student may even be constructing part of the story themselves as they build resources like a wiki or write a blog or a journal entry um, or complete different kinds of assignments to gather together into a portfolio or, or set of materials. All of that, again, gets bundled up into these packages. Um, and so playing these things back requires really an overall system to be able to, to take these static sets of materials and connect them through a teacher and a learner in a kind of shared online space. And that isn't just a purely public space. That space may be something that's you know, much more private, where you want to be able to have a, a discussion with a learner directly that's not just totally out in the open, or with a set of people who are going through a similar set of processes. Or you may want to open it up completely. Um, so what we've done on course sites is we've made it available for you to just take these packages that exist in a, a, a you know, can, can be found anywhere, um, at Merlot or at um, the Rice Connection site, and pull them into Blackboard. And you can also connect to a wide variety of these educational tools and assemble these learning experiences for people. Um, you can then invite your students to participate with those in the same way you could um, do in a you know, traditional LMS type setting. Um, then what we let you do, which I think is a really cool new capability, is choose to publish these resources together into an open and reusable container. Um, again, using this open educational resource catalog that you've created. So as an individual instructor, I can go to my course, I can click on the Publish to OER section within the control panel, and when I publish that, it takes a snapshot of the um, key elements of that course and now gathers them together and makes them available in this publicly accessible resource bundle. And then that bundle is actually versioned and wrapped with a, a set of information so that another computer program or an individual just visiting a web page can get all kinds of useful information about that package. You can associate keywords and provide a more detailed description. As I said, it's versioned, so you see that ability to know, you know, has this updated since I last visited? You even see a last updated date. Um, what you can then do is, is then use social media, search engines, and other places to, to share this material with other instructors, or potentially with students who are setting up something on their own. They can download this collection of resources, and they can then package those, they can then extract from that the, the elements that they want to use, and bundle that into their own course, their own experience that, the, that this other instructor is trying to create, or a group of students is trying to create for themselves. And I think that's really powerful, because what you essentially have now is the infrastructure of the web being used to create these modularized learning components, these, these, these learning activities and, and, and sets of, of, of lessons that can be put together into packages, published, and then easily shared across all these other systems that are out there. And what I'm hoping that we are seeding the groundwork for is kind of a, a web 3.0 revolution where materials that are being created by faculty and by instructors can be easily shared between each other in a way that, that preserves both the attribution of the original person who developed it, allowing them to gain standing academically or among their peer group, but also allows for the most open and easily reusable items. Because I'm confident that out there, there's someone who's really put together the outlines and workings of some really useful lessons around algebra, or around history, and around elements of different types of uh, uh, things that people are teaching. And if you're able to, as another instructor, pull that material around, look at it, build it into your own course, reuse that kind of material, I think that really makes a, a big difference. Um, and this, I think, is really a different model of open than just saying, hey, we integrate with Google, so we're open. Or we're open source, so we're open. The underlying challenge here is not actually about whether the source code is shared or about whether it integrates with this tool or that tool. The underlying principle of openness that I'm taking is people should only have to enter materials into the system once. 
you think about, oh, I'd rather see a world where we are open at the content level to begin with. So that the first time you assemble your instructional materials into a lesson, you're able to be assured that that assembly can live on and move between all kinds of different systems. So if you wanted to take your materials that you've built on course sites and bring them back into a local Blackboard installation, you could do that. If you built a lesson at your local university and you wanted to extract it and then put it on course sites as a, a permanent place where you're then going to you know, teach an open set of students or, or go and, and, and just have it available for your reference, you can put it up there and you have a permanent place for it. Or you can even just keep these zip files of common cartridges on your local USB stick or on your local hard drive. But you, you've only had to assemble it. You know, I think Course Sites is, is leading the way on in terms of transforming the, the, the learning management system from just a place where there used to be this kind of walled garden of information that was available to a select set of students into a very useful connected tool that helps assemble a knowledge network. And that knowledge network is built on the principle of storytelling, engagement with actual instructors, and collecting information in a way that's useful for students. So the Common Cartridge Standard is a public standard. It's available from, from IMS. It's widely adopted throughout the, the industry. So what you're left with is a very um, good place to start. You know, some people have challenged and said, well, this is, you know, you know, there's going to be some trick to this that Blackboard has. There really isn't any ability for me to have a, a, a trick here because what I've done is made it possible for you to, to save this information in a, a publicly consumable way. I mean, if you find And I believe that if Blackboard provides a beautiful experience for assembling this information that is easy for instructors to use and follow, and makes it very simple for them to adopt different institutions that are out there. What we then get is value for not just Blackboard, but for the whole educational universe. And, and I do believe that if we provide you with good experiences and help build the, the value of knowledge that's out there in the world, that that will drive the business success of Blackboard. You know. And I also think that it is far more open if we have technologies which allow the individual users who are putting information into the system to be able to readily take that information back and use it in other systems with very low barriers. Um, we all have had to create that kind of an experience for people and then you can then easily share that experience back out again. And it's not just, you know, some generic experience. It's an experience that's optimized around teaching and learning. Um, so you know, when you consider those needs, I don't think there is software out there other than the LMS that can fill that space. Now, there may be problems with the way the LMS solves some of these challenges or organizes the materials. But fundamentally, I think there's always this need to organize resources together with learning activities and share those information back out. And I think there's always a need for that to be done in a way that is connected to an educational institution or to a degree program that you're marching through as a student or some set of skills you're trying to learn. And you know, there's an identity that goes with the, the experience that you have. And so you know, to suggest then that the LMS is dead is, I think, um, a little like suggesting that you know, music is dead because we've we've moved on to MP3 players. Um, I think that you know the music will continue, the LMS will continue, and you know it's up to us as an as a, as a group and as a you know this group of educational software makers and and users to decide what future we want to have that is based on the new models that are available for human collaboration interaction versus simply recreating the old experience and latching on a couple of uh, bare bones offerings, I think that the new powerful experience will win every time. We've seen this happen in mobility. We've seen this happen with tablet computing. 
We saw this happening with the desktop when people had the choice between the graphical user interface and the um, old style uh, terminal interfaces. So I believe that we are going to see a similar choice made in the industry today. And I think that people that back the notion of open exchange of information that's shared between end users and back the idea of a new enabling of new kinds of experience will be the successful ones. Um, and that's my vision of what I'm trying to create on course sites.